Hello everyone. Uh, what you see behind me is a 1996 Kawasaki ZXI. So if you'll hang on real quick, I'm gonna tell you all about this thing. So you're probably wondering, uh, Josh, what's with the, uh, the new project? Well, let me give a little bit of a backstory and then I'll talk about the project status of this thing. Um, found this on Craigslist, was not running. Um, here's what I know about it not running. It was in the Craigslist without any price on it. It said, you know, negotiate offer or whatever, um, as is, which to me is like, okay, let's at least go take a look at this thing because I, I like this model. Um, I'd seen another Kawasaki previously on Craigslist and um, it was in really rough shape. So I was like, okay, if this one looks better, if it's cleaner on the inside, if, um, you know, if it looks like it has less things wrong with it, um, that'll help me determine if I'm interested or not. So with those things in mind, uh, by the way, the one I looked at previously was a 95 900 um, model Kawasaki, whereas this is a 96 and it's 1100. So obviously this one's bigger. Um, things I noticed on this one that made me feel good and made me come home with it. Um, for starters, somebody had redone the seat. So the upholstery on this thing is in great condition. There are no uh, places in the hole underneath that needed to be fixed with fiberglass or anything like that. Though I'm set up to be able to fix stuff, I really didn't want to have to do any kind of gel coating or paint or anything like that. And this thing here uh, did not require any of that. So two steps in the right direction. Um, third thing that I noticed, <sighs> other jet ski I looked at that wasn't running and was in rougher shape, would not get a spark. Um, the engine was tampered with. You can see where somebody had had the heads off, so I knew it had had work done. Um, and what I mean by you know, how I was able to tell it had the heads off. Um, bolts were broken off on it all over the place. A lot of stuff like that that I just wasn't real comfortable with. This one didn't have any of that. Um, the engine was much cleaner uh, when I went to look at it. Um, here's what the owner was able to tell me about what was wrong mechanically. Um, this thing here, owner said uh, went to get it out this year, wouldn't fire up for season. Um, after talking back and forth with the guy, I really got the feeling that he was an honest person. Um, he works locally here at a hospital, and and we knew a bunch of the same people. We got to talking, and um, just kind of made me feel a bit more at ease. Um, not to mention, he said he didn't know much about jet skis, and from the way he talked about it in dialogue, um, I could even tell more that he was being honest with me because he really didn't know much. No offense to him, uh, he did tell me that and from just a conversation it, it helped prove that fact to me. Um, okay, what else is there about the talking to him? Okay, so here's what he told me was wrong. So we'll get it out for the season, we're gonna get ready to, to ride it and all that kind of stuff and wouldn't fire up. So them not knowing anything, they didn't know where to begin to try to get it started and all that. Um, they call around. This was in Fairfield Bay, Arkansas, which is about a two and a half hour drive, give or take, from where I'm located. Um, they use it on Greer's Ferry Lake. You can Google Greer's Ferry Lake. It's a beautiful lake. It's a big lake. Um, anyway, with all that being said, that's where it was located when I went to pick it up. So they called some local marine shops around the area of Fairfield Bay to see who was the best to work on jet skis. Well, they found the best mechanics because some people pointed them from other marine shops saying, go to these guys here. Um, those guys right there are the best for working on jet skis. That's who you need to talk to. Called up the guys. They started diagnosing some problems. Um, they tested the main wiring harness. I think they even took it off and put a new one in place uh, to see if that was what was wrong. Didn't make a difference. So the next thing they were going to do was start diagnosing things inside the CDI box of this uh, Kawasaki. Um, jet skis, the CDI box is a common thing when you're not getting an engine to start and stuff like that. So that's what the mechanics were going pathwise uh, of figuring this thing out. So 
called the owner at the time, the mechanics did, and said, um, wire and harness it and fix it. We think it's probably going to be in the CDI box. Uh, here's some part prices to be replaced. Uh, and then here's what it's probably going to cost us hourly. And the uh, owner told me that it was going to cost probably around $800 or so labor and parts to get this thing running and they just they just weren't interested in, in doing that so told the mechanics no stop where you're at we'll just come get it and we're just gonna sell it as is so fast forward it's on craigslist i see it i drive to fairfield bay to take a look at it um so i get there and true to his story he's telling me all the things i just told you i take the seat off look down and sure enough the cdi box is open you can see uh, wires and stuff and the igniter box all just kind of in shambles i say shambles i say it's more to mean it was just kind of pulled out and you could see where things had been uh, shuffled around uh, nothing was corroded nothing was broken nothing like that wiring it's just kind of you know it was not the way it's supposed to be all buttoned up so knowing that the CDI box was probably going to need to be repaired and knowing they just couldn't get it started, could have been carburetor problems, battery problems, you know, this, this, and this. Um, I knew what the fixes could be and I f negotiated until I got it down to a price where I was comfortable bringing it home. Um, now, normally you handshake and, and you make a deal and all that. Well, his wife was helping doing the dealing and she took to me and my wife pretty quickly. And not only did she shake my hand, but she gave us hugs and exchanged phone numbers. And she's been Facebook messaging my wife on how's it going, getting this thing running, all that kind of stuff. So they're really good people. And uh, they even said they would give money back if I couldn't get it running. Well, I'm about to show you a CDI box fix. And I'm also gonna show you me getting this thing uh, running. So, spoiler alert, it's gonna be running. Here's how I fix the CDI box. So I pulled the igniter off of our Kawasaki 1100 and I'm about to put it into the oven. The oven has been preheated to 300 and you're supposed to preheat the oven 300, put it on a cold pan. I'm using parchment paper to keep it from getting extra hot on this casing here and pop it in and 10 minutes later, take it out of the oven. Watch and make sure nothing is melting in the meantime. This is supposed to evaporate the water that could be inside of this uh, box here. Here we go. Huh. Alright, that's 10 minutes. That smells weird. Nothing melted though, that's good. It's just hot enough to evaporate water if there's water or moisture inside, but not hot enough to melt your plugs. Now they're probably a little bit soft, so I'm not gonna touch them on let them cool. See how it goes. Okay, so I also told you that I get it running. So I, the CDI box fixed, here's me putting it on there. And like I say, this is just kind of, I'm gonna speed through here, just me getting it all put together to see if I can get it fired up. After I got this box on, the next thing I did is I went to O'Reilly and I got a um, brand new battery for it. I got the premium battery and not the normal standard uh, $70 battery. Um, I went ahead and got the $112 battery that would have more cranking amps because the battery that was on this thing had zero. After charging it all night, it still wouldn't kick over. Um, this thing, I had to not only have a charge uh, going on it. I also have my battery booster box on it just to get this thing to crank over So that told me I needed something with a lot of cranking amps um, Maybe other people have had different experiences, but that was mine. So here's me Before cleaning carburetors or anything Got this thing to start up with a CDI box and a new battery and some starting fluid This is on my wife's aunt and uncle's private lake behind their house private as then it's a small uh, lake behind their house without public access. Um, them and their neighbors both have access, but there's no boats out there hardly ever. It's usually just you fish off the bank. So uh, I launched this thing into the lake and I went to scooting around on the water. Again, just getting it started with some uh, starting fluid and a new battery and a CDI box fix. This was the next day 
after buying this the day before with it not starting. So anyway, now you know the story. Um, let me show you something else I have replaced on this uh, trailer here, so to speak, which is a Yachts Club trailer. Um, first thing I did was I put brand new LED submersible um, trailer lights on it. I got them off Amazon. I will have a link in the description of this video so that you can figure out which ones these are and purchase them. Uh, they were a really good deal. Um, again, threw these things on first so that I could trailer it and get it into the water and test it and all that kind of stuff. So that's where I'm going in this video. The next thing you're going to see me do with this uh, 96 Kawasaki is um, rebuild the carburetor kits because on the lake it was spitting and sputtering because I hadn't done anything to it other than just trying to get it to fire. Um, I believe engines want to run. Um, I just think do what you can just to see if they'll try to run and then if they don't you go and diagnose and see what needs to be replaced, cleaned or whatever. So again, the engine wanted to run. It ran with just some basic things to make it run smoother. I want to rebuild the carburetors uh, which there are three of them. I bought a kit off of eBay for $75 because there's, again, three carburetors and uh, the total kit for all three was $75 with express shipping. I'll also put a link to the post in my description. It probably won't last forever, so if you're seeing this video a few years from the original uh, upload or even maybe a few um, months or weeks and it doesn't work anymore, I'm sorry, but maybe you can uh, get an idea of who, uh, who sold it. Anyway, that's the next video. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more work on the 96 Kawasaki 1100 ZXI.